Praise the Lord. I welcome everyone to a beautiful worship service this morning in Jesus' name. And I pray that the beauty of the Lord will be transferred into every life in Jesus' name. And the purpose of God for bringing you to the service today and bringing you to himself that purpose will be fulfilled in jesus name today can mean a turning around a turning around in your life it will be for me i said for me i pray to be fulfilled in jesus name Father, we thank you for this moment. Thank you for the period we spent in your presence. Thank you for your glory. Thank you for your honor. Thank you for the exaltation of your name. Thank you for your purpose in our lives. And we thank you because step by step, we're moving on to the place you have appointed. And we pray that your love, your mercy, your compassion, and your revelation will not fail in any of our lives in Jesus' name. Help us, Lord, to understand your way, understand your will, and to follow you to the path of victory and destiny in Jesus' name. Bless everyone here today and all who are hearing the word along with us at the headquarters. Bless everyone without exception in Jesus' name. Be glorified in every life. I pray you'll give us something definite, one and all, to take back home that will make us fulfill the purpose of our existence here on earth in jesus name we well, thank you because we know you have answered in jesus name we pray today in our Sunday scripture session we have studied some 33 34 35 36 37 as you look at all those chapters and you look at all the verses the lord can speak to us in all the chapters together just have to sweep and go through all the psalms but the lord is bringing something important to us from one or two verses in Psalm 37. Psalm 37, reading from verse 23. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Think about that. If you're going to get to any place in life, you need the road, the steps, the path that leads you there. And only God knows what he had ordained from all eternity and the place he wants to get you to and how you will get to the final destination, which is heaven. And he picks you up as if you are the only one living on the face of the earth. The country counts you during census as one of a great population. The church counts you as a member of a great congregation and you are counted as one of the many that attended service or belong to a particular church but God singles you out 
one man, one woman, and he wants to take that life from here to there, from the beginning to the very end, and he wants to take you to the destination he marked out for you from all eternity. And the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And he, the Almighty God, delights in the way of that good man. Look at verse 31. In verse 31, the law of his God is in his heart. None of his steps shall slide. You know now, he's talking about a particular one, a particular man, a particular individual. And he says the Lord of his God. He has come to know the Lord. He has come to believe in the Lord. And because he believes in the Lord, the Lord God of heaven becomes his God. And then the law of that God, the God of redemption, the God of renewal, the God that purifies the heart and he writes the law in the heart of the man. The law of his God. You have given your life to the Lord. You become a child of God and the revelation of God, the word of God, the mind of God, the law of God abides in your heart. And then he says, as you move on, step after step, point after point, from one level to the other, he says, none of his steps shall slide. It's very important then that you single yourself out as God singles you out and he says he's going to put his law his word his revelation in your heart and then he leads you day after day and step after step and none of your steps shall slide in Jesus name in Psalm 73 we're looking at verse 2 Psalm 73 looking at verse 2 it tells us but as for me my feet were almost gone my steps had well nigh slipped the psalmist here said god guides god leads and god controls the steps of a good man but as for me some things happened in his life he looked the wrong direction he saw the wrong thing and he viewed the wrong people and because of that he said my steps was well were well night sleeping but then he came back and in verse 23 he begins now to say nevertheless i am continually with thee nevertheless i am continually with thee and thou hast holding me by thy right hand in verse 24 he rejoices in the fact that he belongs to the lord and he says thou shall guide me with thy counsel that's what God does. You give your life to the Lord. You are in the hands of the Almighty God. And He guides your steps. And He says, Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel. And afterwards, receive me to glory. It tells us in Psalm 119, verse 133. Psalm 119, 119 psalm 119 verse 133 order my steps in thy word order my steps is something you have to commit to the lord in prayer and you have to tell the lord oh lord i surrender i give myself totally unto you i cannot guide myself 
I cannot lead myself. I cannot go to the right way by myself. Order my steps in thy word and let not any iniquity have dominion over me. But uh, some, uh, the next verse there, it says, Deliver me from the oppression of man that will try to get you away from the path of the Lord. Deliver me from the oppression of man. So will I keep thy precepts. The next verse, verse 135, make thy face to shine upon thy servant and teach me, teach me. There's a time to say, teach us. There's another time to say, myself now in particular, as I walk through the paths of life, as I take the steps that were marked for me from all eternity, for me by myself, not looking to the one by the right or looking to the one by the left, not looking at my friends and not looking at my neighbors, where are they going, how are they going, me in particular, that to teach me thy statutes, the Lord will teach you. And the way he leads you, you will follow in Jesus' name. Today we're talking about the righteous man's steps to greatness and glory. The steps of a good man, a saved man, a righteous man. The steps of a child of God to greatness here on earth greatness they are in glory and then to glory the righteous man steps to greatness and glory there are three things we're looking at number one ordering the steps of a godly man into goodness there'll be goodness in your life all right there'll be goodness in my life ordering the steps of a godly man into goodness number two ordaining the steps of a guided man a guided man a guided man the one who allows the lord to guide him the one who does not say i know the way i know what to do I'm intelligent enough, I'm wise enough, I can guide myself. The one who says, I'm just a man, I'm just a woman of yesterday. What do I know? I do not know everything of the past, neither do I know everything of the present, and neither do I know what may happen tomorrow. Because of that, I need the all-knowing God. I need the all-wise God. I need the Lord who knew me and who knows the whole of uh, humanity. I need him to guide me. He has ordained the guiding of the steps of such a man, of such a woman to his greatness. Number three is observing as well as obtaining the steps of a growing man to glory. Observing as well as obtaining the steps of a growing man to glory. Let's come to number one. In number one, ordering the steps of a godly man into goodness. We're coming back to Psalm 37 and we're reading from verse 23. Psalm 37, we're reading from verse 23. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delighteth in his way well you say who is a good man how can somebody be good and we're not talking about your neighbor calling you good society calling you good your company calling you good your family calling you good God knowing that's a good man God knowing that somebody has transformed and is a good man, a good woman, and the steps of that good man, good woman, they are ordered by the Lord, and he delighted in his ways. 
let's look at three things say number one the first step into his salvation that's how you become a good man a good woman a good person the first step into his salvation number two our following steps after the savior after you are saved after you become born again and then the lord now shows you the following steps that you are to follow after that salvation following after our savior number three is our faith steps the steps of faith according to the scriptures look at number one it tells us in psalm 37 verse 23 the steps of a good man the steps of a good man are ordered by the lord and he delighted in his ways and the same psalmist tells us that there's no good man look at psalm 14 verse 3 in Psalm 14 verse 3 they are all gone aside they are all together become filthy there is none that do a good no not one the same psalmist that said God orders the steps of a good man he himself also now tells us there is no one that do it good no not one there must be a way then to cross over and become a good man a good child a good woman before the lord can take up your life as an individual and order your steps look at what we're told in romans chapter 3 reading from verse 12 romans chapter 3 reading from verse 12 they are all gone out of the way old testament new testament first century and 21st century at that time and at this time they are all gone out of the way they are all together become unprofitable look at this there is none that do it good no not one it says there is nobody who is good and so how is somebody going to become good so that the steps of that good man will be ordered by the lord by the way why does he say there is no profitable and there is none that is good no not one look at verse 13 in verse 13 their throat is an open sepulcher with their tongues they have used the seed the poison of herbs poisonous snake is under their leaves verse 14 in verse 14 whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness is describing humanity before you know christ before you come to the lord before you are saved here is your life here is the description of your character and he tells us in verse 15 in verse 15 their feet are sweet to shed blood 16 tells us destruction and misery are in their ways in verse 17 the way of peace they have not known why how they have not known the prince of peace they have not known the lord there's no peace in their heart there's no peace in their home there's no peace in their environment they are men and women of strife it tells us in verse 18 there is no fear of god before their eyes whatever they do they do not wait for the guidance of god they do not wait for the ordering of their steps by the lord because there is no fear of god before their eyes in fact it tells us in verse 19 in verse 19 it says now we know that what things soever the word of god says the lord says it says to them that are under the lord look at this that every mouth may be stopped and all the world become guilty before god all the world become guilty before god in verse 23 verse 23 says for all have sinned and come short of the glory of god that tells us then 
that we have all gone astray there's nobody who is good and yet before the lord will take up your life and guide you and lead you you have to be a good man a good woman a good child the steps of a good man are ordered by the lord and he delighteth in his ways how then will you become good by the salvation of the lord look at romans chapter 10 reading from verse 8 so Romans chapter 10 We're reading from verse 8 But what says it? The word is nice thee Even in thy mouth And in thine heart That is the word of faith Which we preach Here is how to turn Here is how to repent Here is how to cross over From the general to your people Here is how to single yourself out and become the man the woman the boy the girl that god can take over his life and then continue to lead you look at verse 9 it says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the lord jesus if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the lordship of jesus if you will turn over your life into the hands of the lord jesus and you are not a kind of a trying to a driver the car of your life with the Lord Jesus Christ you bring him to the driver's seat in your life and you say you'll be my Lord you'll be my Savior you will be my director you will be my controller and you make that personal choice of the Lord that if thou that's personal that's singular if thou shalt confess with thy mouth not our mouth thy mouth you single yourself out as he himself wants to single you out and then he says i shall believe in thine heart you cannot believe with my heart i cannot believe with your heart it has to be your own heart your own mind your own decision that you say i'm offering myself i'm handing myself over unto the lord in a personal way at a very definite time and then you believe in your heart that god raised him up from the dead thou shalt be saved verse 10 tells us for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness with the heart your own heart you believe unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation that is the first step through his salvation that now you become a changed man a changed woman if any man be in christ is a new creature old things are passed away and behold all things have become new it is that that experience of salvation that experience of regeneration that experience of conversion that turns you on and turns you around you're now in a place that god can guide you that's the first step after that after you come to know the lord as your personal savior and you have taken the step into his salvation what next we're looking at number two now the following steps after the savior it's not only our savior it's also our standard it's not only our savior it's the one that has gone before us it's a forerunner is the one that walks the way before us and he says i'm going to guide you i'm going to lead you i'm going to direct you and because we look at the pattern of his life the model of his life and we look at the sum total of the life of the lord jesus christ and step by step we now follow the following steps after the savior were told in first peter chapter 2 reading from verse 23 verse 20 uh, chapter 2 verse 21 it says for even here unto were ye called that's the calling of god even here unto were ye called because christ also suffered for us that's how we got saved he suffered for us he sacrificed his life for us 
because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example. Leaving us an example. There is no area of your life that you cannot ask the Lord, Oh Lord, what example do you have for me? What pattern do you have for me? And what model do you have for me? I'm in this situation. I'm at this crossroad. I'm about to make this decision. How will you guide me? And what would you have done if you were here? He has let us, he has let you in particular, an example that ye should follow his steps. Every area of conduct, every area of behavior, every area of doing whatever, you can look up to the Lord because he has left us an example that we should follow his steps. It tells us in John chapter 13 verse 15, John chapter 13 verse 15, for I have given you an example. Here is the Lord himself telling all the disciples and telling you and telling me and he's telling you in particular if the Lord is going to guide you if the Lord is going to lead you he says I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you look at Philippians chapter 2 verse 3 in Philippians chapter 2 verse 3 let nothing be done through strife or being glory look at the example of Christ but in lowliness of mind let each esteem other better than themselves in verse 4 it tells us look not every man on his own things that's how to follow the Lord there are many people that still follow the pattern of the world what's in it for me what will I get what will I gain what will I profit how can I have my way it says no it says look not every man on his own things but every man also on the things of others that he should look at how can I be of benefit to others how can I profit others what can I sacrifice so that others will have the benefit they ought to have in life how can I lift up others how can I encourage others how can I be like Christ planting and doing good in the lives of people around me and then he tells us in verse 5 how that will happen let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus after we got saved after we got born again and the spirit of God is bearing witness in our heart that we are the children of God every day now we look at what Christ will do you wake up in the morning what will Christ do you go to school or you go to college or you go to your place of work what will Christ do somebody crosses your way what will Christ do somebody does a good thing unto you what will Christ do somebody persecutes what will Christ do you are now following after the steps of the Lord Jesus Christ it tells us in first John chapter 2 reading from verse 6 first John chapter 2 reading from verse 6 it tells us that he that says he abideth in him and you know some people are quick to give testimony I'm saved I'm born again I'm regenerated I'm a new creature I, I hold on he that says he abideth in him also ought to walk even as he walks your life will give us a brighter testimony your behavior your conduct and the steps you are taking and the life you are living will give us a better testimony than all the shouting i'm saved i'm born again i'm a child of god i belong to this i belong to that he that says he abideth in christ ought himself also to walk also to speak also to live also to act also to conduct himself also to behave even as christ walked as 
Christ lived, as Christ behaved, you cannot begin to ask yourself in your home between husband and wife, are you ever thoughtful of your action? In your home between children and parents, are you ever thoughtful of your action? If I were the only one living that my wife will see and my life will, my wife will see a different kind of life and then I'll turn my wife unto the Lord I want to behave in such a way as a good representative of Christ if the wife was the only if you wife was the only one your children will see your husband will see that they will not hear any other message but the example they will see will show that constantly consistently courageously and compassionately you are living for Christ and then you're a good representative of Christ because you're following after the steps of the Lord Jesus Christ and as Christ would have turned your husband to the Lord your life your behavior your character your conversation and your disposition will turn the husband to the Lord let me ask you if nobody else preaches sanctification holiness without which no man shall see the Lord and you the wife were the only one your husband will see and learn about holiness and learn about sanctification where your husband see the steps of Christ in your life that my wife is following the steps of Christ and even if nobody else preaches holiness unto me her life convicts me of the holiness without which no man shall save the Lord after we are saved that's what we think about we're thinking about I ought to be a model an example a pattern of following after the steps of the Savior I pray the Lord will help you I said, I pray the Lord will help you. He'll help you as a husband. He'll help you as a wife. He'll help you as a child. He'll help you as a student. He'll help you in your community. He'll help you in your place of work that they will know that is a good man, a good woman, a good child, and the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and the Lord delighted in his ways. Let's come to number three here, is the faith step, our faith steps according to the scriptures. If we're going to follow the steps that the Lord will lead us by, it's going to be the step of faith. God never leads in the way of unbelief. God never leads in the way of fear. If you are the man that's always afraid, I'm afraid if I take this step, I'm afraid if I take this step, you are always walking by sight. And because you are walking by sight, every time is fear. You want to move forward, I'm afraid. You want to go right, I'm afraid. You want to have a relationship uh, with a brother or with a company of people, I'm afraid. You want to get to a new situation, I'm afraid. The Lord cannot lead us at that point where we have the disposition of fear if the Lord is going to lead and the Lord will lead you and the Lord will guide you he guides us he leads us on the point that we're having faith in the Lord look at Romans chapter 4 and we're reading from verse 12 in Romans chapter 4 verse 12 look at this and the father of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only, but who also walk, listen to this, read that in your Bible, underline it if possible, it says, who also walk in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham. Walking in the steps of the faith of our father Abraham. Look at verse 16. In verse 16, it says, therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace to the end 
for the purpose the promise might be sure to all the seed not to that only which is of the Lord but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham who is our father the father of us all that he is if we're going to get into this path and we're going to be led by the Lord we have to have absolute trust in the Lord that God cannot lead me astray that God cannot lead me into error that God cannot lead me into evil that we have faith in God we have confidence in God and we have trust in God and we are absolutely confidently depending upon the Lord that is what Abraham did when he did not know the future and yet he trusted the Lord he believed the Lord and he gave his soul life into the hands of the Lord it tells us in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 8 Hebrews chapter 11 verse 8 by faith Abraham when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance he obeyed he obeyed you see when we have faith in God and we hear the word of God we see the revelation of God we're guided by the Lord and he points the way and he says this is the way what he therein our faith will make us to obey and we're told that we need to walk in the steps of the faith of Abraham and now we're told about that faith of Abraham that when God called him and showed him the way he ought to go he obeyed and he went out not knowing whither he went he went out not knowing whither he went that's how to follow the Lord that you can close your eyes and you can say Lord you know the way I don't have to go and investigate I don't have to ask you a lot of questions I don't have to wonder I don't have to debate I don't have to argue you have called and you have showed me that this is the way what he therein and because I trust you and because I believe you I am going to follow the steps you are outlining before me like you are following Abraham but you know any other attitude any other disposition if we're not following the way of the Lord by faith if we always I want to see the end before I start the journey I want to know what will become of this and become of that before I respond to the calling of the Lord and look at Romans chapter 14 verse 23 Romans chapter 14 verse 23 I'm looking at the last line there Romans chapter 14 verse 23 the last line whatsoever is not of faith is seen have you seen that church I said have you seen that in your Bible say yes okay read it out the last line one two three go You see in our lives you are taking decision in our lives you have heard the revelation of God in our lives you have seen the way the Lord is leading and he says this is the way what he therein there are a lot of things you will not know at that point there are a lot of things you will not see at that point and you have to behave like Abraham and get up and, and go the way he's showing you he leads us step by step and step after step and when he shows you this you say yes Lord he shows you another yes Lord he shows you another you say yes Lord and then you follow him by faith one step at a time whatsoever is not of faith is sin come back then and live by faith and when God says go and when God says this is the way walk here therein then you walk therein and the Lord will bless you in Jesus name 
isn't that what has delayed people in getting married the lord has spoken to them and they are saying take this step take this step they are asking questions but lord if i do that if i go that way how about this how about this god will not answer all your questions if you don't have faith whatsoever is not of faith is seen you are to walk and the lord is saying yes i've had your prayer and i'm going to lead you i'm going to direct you here is what you do take that first step and you're saying but if i get there when will they promote me if i get there when will this happen when will this happen the lord is saying i am the lord i'm calling you and he wants you to have faith and to walk in the steps of the faith of abraham whatsoever is not of faith is sin and the lord is calling you sin this is the work to do for him he wants you to give your time your life into the service of the Lord you say yes Lord I'm going to serve you that's my consecration and that is my commitment but oh Lord if I give my whole self unto you how about my family how will I feed how will this happen when God called Abraham he obeyed not knowing whither he went whatsoever is not of faith a sin the Lord is bringing you among people that believe in holiness without which no man shall say the Lord I've had a lot of stories about them those holy holy people sanctified sanctified people well I, I've been there and I know this is right but if I take this step how about this how about this how about all my friends how about all my connections how about this and that whatsoever is not of faith a sin then the Lord is calling you and is saying you can be saved you can be sanctified if I get sanctified how will I hold on how will I remain in that sanctification I don't want to get into an experience I'll not be able to keep it is not you that will keep the experience it is the experience that will keep you whatsoever is not of faith a sin and I pray the Lord will give you will give me will give us one and all the faith of Abraham in Jesus name and whatever people around you they will not hinder you and they will not stop your way in Jesus name we come to point number two now ordering the steps of a guided man to greatness ordering the steps of a guided man to greatness you know if you're going to get to what god has appointed the lord will guide and you might have some kind of misgivings in the way what i mean is god showed joseph a dream and god showed him this is where you will be and even his brothers interpreted the dream and he understood this is the way but the steps that god guided him through to get him to the place that dream will be fulfilled how could he understand his brothers said here comes the dreamer let's take hold of him kill him and then we'll see what will become of his dream he kept on walking he kept on walking then he got to their midst. as he got there they took him they removed this dress the dress that showed that the father loved him and the father accepted this my son is going to be on top they removed that dress they put him in a pitch and they were eating and they saw the people coming and they sold him to slavery that's another step how do i understand that how would joseph understand that but following the lord as the lord is guiding day by day have you noticed in your bible joseph never asked any question joseph did not accuse god of foolishness god do you know what you're doing do you know where you're leading me is this the way you guide your people joseph asked no question he got to the house of potiphar he was his very best as a servant as a house held 
God, is this what you promised me? Is this the way you are going to guide? No question. Eventually, the wife of Potiphar said, Come, a young man, you don't know anything. You need pleasure. You need the flesh. And the man said, No. A person being guided by God in holiness and righteousness and is under the watching eyes of God, we don't do things like that. Ah. And so the woman told a lie against him. And the husband of the woman did not check up. And he manifest, manifested authority and power and threw him into the prison. A guided man, a guided woman, a guided child. And the man, Joseph, did not ask any question. How can this be? I'm doing the best I can. I'm as holy as I can be. Whatsoever is not of faith is sin. I'm following after the Lord he is guiding and I'm going to keep on following the way he guides and so he got to the prison and then in the prison he still was his best are you your best when you get to the valley are you your best when you get to a crossroad are you your best when you are under oppression are you your best when people when they persecute you are you your best when you are in a place you cannot understand eventually he interpreted dreams for those two men and he told the one that was going to be delivered remember me when everything goes well with you and the man got to the king and forgot all about joseph but Joseph was being guided at the right time. It will come out at the right time. You will come out. Yeah. And Pharaoh had a dream. And God was the one that gave that dream. And God hid the interpretation of that dream from everybody in the whole nation. And then the man said, I remember my fault today. There is one man in the prison. If you call him, he will interpret the dream. He testified about him. Let others testify about you. Let others project you and lift you up rather than blowing your trumpet all the time the trumpet will just we will soon go out of order out of tune you're not supposed to blow your own trumpet and then eventually they brought joseph and joseph interpreted the dream and it's not pharaoh that promoted joseph it's god almighty that promoted joseph and god will promote you it's not the place joseph never thought that when he had the dream in the house of his father in the privacy of the room that he had with his father joseph never thought the dream would be fulfilled in egypt never but now he became the ruler there and eventually the brothers came and he said is my father still alive and he could not look at his face he said don't worry about that it's not you that sent me here i'm a guided man you are a guided man you are a guided woman you'll be a guided child in jesus name it's not you that sent me here but god sent me here before you the lord will send you there be patient just keep on following the Lord one day at a time, one step at a time, one event at a time. Don't jump ahead and the Lord will guide you in Jesus' name. Amen. Number two, ordaining the steps of a guided man to greatness. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the stoop of a gracious man number two the stops of a godly man number three the strokes of a groomed man look at number one the stoop of a gracious man you know what it means to stoop it means you bend forward then you lower yourself you humble yourself You've seen people that stoop, and it says the stoop 
of a gracious man you see there are people that go through life they don't stoop they don't bend they don't get low they don't humble themselves they're straight all the time and they walk with a kind of raised forehead and even if, if they're going to knock their head on a beam in front of them they say i never bend they say i'm a man of my mind they say i never stoop for anybody i never bend for anybody if you ever get to your destination it will take you a long time you might not even get to that destination but a man being guided by god is, is gracious and he knows when to bend he knows when to stoop let me show you in first samuel chapter 24 verse 8 for samuel chapter 24 in verse 8 david also arose afterward and he went out of the cave and he cried after Saul saying my lord the king not my persecutor not wicked man not a treacherous man not a wicked king not a king who does not know he ought to take care of the citizens of his subject and here we are and you are driving me all about and you left the throne and you are after me no not at all you don't know how to stoop you don't know how to bend you don't know how to be humble in your language he said my lord the king then when someone looked behind him david stooped david stooped david stooped with his face to the earth and bowed himself that's the man that is being guided by the lord is not arguing how innocent i am is not arguing what have i done is not debating what has happened is not taking a lawyer against the king is not taking the you know big mouth people that can talk and criticize against the king is chewed with his face to the earth and he bowed himself look at verse 16 in verse 16 and it came to pass when david had made an end of speaking these words unto saul that saul said is this thy voice my son david my son david you know if you have a good attitude that good attitude would influence the most wicked person you have ever known and your turning will turn them your stooping will turn them it will turn them around but if you throw stones at them Saul knows how to throw it's not going to throw stone he'll throw javelin but because now David stooped down if you're going to get to where you are going praise the lord you'll get there yeah. that place the lord has ordained for you i said praise the lord you'll get there in jesus name you will know how to stoop when you are taking those steps and then saul said is this thy voice my son david and saul lifted up his voice and wept. look at verse 17 and verse 17 says and he said to david thou art more righteous than i am than i don't blow your trumpet i'm righteous i'm holy i'm sanctified this is the day when i was sanctified and everybody knows i'm innocent let's all say it and the soul said unto him thou art more righteous than i for thou hast rewarded me good whereas i've rewarded thee evil look at verse 18 
and thou hast showed this day how thou how that thou hast dealt well with me for as much as when the Lord had delivered me into thine hand thou killest me not in verse 19 for if a man find his enemy will he let him go well away they, wherefore the Lord your enemy will pray for you Amen. your persecutors will pray for you Amen. but you know my brother my sister you need to know how to go through life and stoop down sometimes kneel down sometimes prostrate for the elders something sometimes lower yourself sometimes humble yourself it says now Saul was saying wherefore the Lord will reward thee good for that thou hast done for that thou hast done unto me this day look at verse 20 and now behold I know well Saul talking behold I know well that thou shalt tell me that thou shalt tell me out aloud surely be king so forgot himself your enemies will forget themselves the very reason why Saul was chasing David about is that David will not become a king he said never he will not take over from me never I will not hand over the throne unto David never I will not allow him to remain alive I'll kill him before I die so that Jonathan my son will be king but now that same Saul is the one that is praying and he's saying I know very well that thou shall surely be king and that the kingdom of Israel shall be established in thine hand somebody shout a good amen, amen. the stoop of a gracious man number two the stops of a godly man you know when the lord guides us it doesn't make us to run every moment of the way there are people that know how to run how to walk they don't know how to stop they're doing something and the Lord is guiding them and the Lord is leading them and the Lord is saying stop they never know how to stop the stops of a godly man look at Abraham once again the Lord called him and said take that your son Isaac and then offer him unto me on a mountain that I will show you. Early in the morning, Abraham rose up and he took Isaac and he took the wood and he was going and he got to the place of sacrifice and he laid the wood and he laid the son Isaac on that wood and he took the knife and he raised up the knife the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord the same Lord that told him to take Isaac there and offer that Isaac the voice came and said Abraham stop there are the stops of a godly man as the Lord is guiding as the Lord is leading sometimes you are in the momentum and because you are running with the momentum and you are gathering speech you look away from the guidance of the Lord and the time comes when the Lord says stop and you must understand that and you will know that the steps and the stops of a gracious man of a guided man of a good man are ordered by the Lord let me show you from the life of uh, David again in first Samuel chapter 25 I'm reading from verse 10 for Samuel chapter 25 verse 10 and Nabal answered David's servant and said who is David 
who is the son of Jesse. There have been many servants nowadays that break away every man from his master. Look at verse 11. In verse 11, shall I then take my bread and my water and my flesh that I have killed for my sharers and give it unto men whom I know not whence they be? And when David heard that, David told the servants, Get up all your weapons. We're going to finish that man. We protected his cattle, we protected his head, we protected everything, and now we're just looking for something to eat. And look at the way he's talking, and then he was ready until Abigail came out to him and said, David, you're planning to do something. Can you stop the stops? of a guided and a graceful and gracious man those stops are ordered by the lord do you ever stop anything you decided you will do you became angry you became infuriated you became bothered you became concerned and in your mind in your heart because of what has happened this is what i'm going to do do you ever stop any plan you have that can hinder you from progress in the future or do you yield to anger do you yield to pride do you yield to your private personal decision i told myself i told my family i will never get to that situation i'm going to retaliate i'm going to revenge do you ever stop if you're a man of God, if you're a woman of God, the Lord will know when to stop you and you will know when to stop and when to stoop down. Look at verse 23. In verse 23, and when Abigail saw David, she hasted and lighted off the ass and fell before David on her face and bowed herself to the ground. Look at verse 24. In verse 24, it says, and fell at his feet and said upon me, my Lord, upon me let this iniquity be and let thine handmaid i pray thee speak in thine audience and hear the words of thine handmaid and then we're looking at verse 32 in verse 32 david said to abigail blessed be blessed be the lord god of israel which sent thee this day to meet me verse 33 it says and blessed be thine advice blessed be thine advice brother do you ever take an advice you have killed goliath you know it all you can bring down goliath with the sling and with the stone do you ever take advice and you have gathered all these 600 men you've trained them and anything you tell them to do they do you are a master you are a lord in your rights you ever need listen to advice david knew when to stoop down david knew when to stop the steps of a good man are guided and led and ordered by the lord the stops of a good man are guided and led and ordered by the lord blessed be thine advice blessed be thou which has kept me this day from coming to shed blood and from avenging myself with mine own hand and then in verse 34 he tells us for in very deed as the lord god of israel liveth which has kept me back from hurting thee except thou hast hasted and come to meet me surely there had not been led unto Nabal by the come by the morning light anyone that pieces against the wall the stops of a good man the stops of a godly man the stops of a guided man number three here the strokes for a groomed man a groomed man what does it mean to be groomed to be well prepared 
to be prepared for what the Lord has for you the strokes for a groomed man you know there are people they want to live such a free life they cannot even bear any correction they cannot bear any stroke they cannot bear any kind of rebuke they cannot bear any checks in their lives they are not groomed people they're wild and all the rough edges in their lives are still there because they are not groomed for success they are not groomed and prepared for glory but you know if the lord is going to guide if the lord is going to lead if the lord is going to order your life there are times you'll say no you can't go there there are times you apply the stroke and you will say you are going the wrong way but you know people who will say i went to that church and when i went you know they pointed out something it was like the preacher there knew my life and he pointed at this and pointed at this that's how you are groomed that's how you are prepared and that is how the lord will cut off all those rough edges in your life and he will give the strokes that will help you I pray you'll not run away from correction. Church, I said, I pray you'll not run away from correction. Look at Psalm 119, verse 67. Psalm 119, verse 67. Before I was afflicted, I went astray. I was taking the wrong path. And then the Lord brought a stroke and he brought affliction, he brought correction. Before I, before I was afflicted, I went astray. But now have I kept thy word. I listen to the checks, I listen to the control, I listen to the correction. But now have I kept thy word. Look at Proverbs chapter 3. I will read him from verse 11. Proverbs chapter 3. I will read him from verse 11. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord. My son, if you're a real son, my daughter, if you're a real daughter, my son, my daughter, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. Neither be weary of his correction. That's what takes place every time. Correcting, correcting, correcting. You're moving from this place and you're going to your destination. You're correcting every time. And look at the simple illustration of a driver. The driver is holding the steering and then he knows where he's going every time every time watch those drivers they're moving they're steering they're moving the steering they're adjusting every time if you lock up that steering and you don't correct anything and you just keep it like that solid stable and there's no movement at all you'll get out of the way it is the moving of the steering it is the chastisement it is the correction that you do every time that makes you to get your destination you'll get there my son despise not the chastening of the lord neither be weary of his correction look at verse 12 in verse 12 for whom the lord loveth he correcteth whom the lord loveth he correcteth you know people don't understand love they think love is smiling every time you're going astray we're smiling you're taking poison or smiling at you and you are being derailed you are going a place that will bring devastation destruction to your life and we're smiling at you and you say i love my pastor my pastor is always full of smiles i don't like the other fellow the other fellow is always saying don't go that way don't go that way turn this way turn that way it is a correction that shows that we love you whom the lord loveth he corrected even as a father the son in whom he delighted the strokes of a groomed man the lord will groom you he'll prepare you prepare you for greatness prepare you for godliness 
prepare you for goodness and prepare you for glory in jesus name we're coming to point number three now point number three is the observing or the obtaining the steps of a growing man to glory a growing man to glory we're looking at psalm 73 and i'm reading from verse 2 psalm 73 we're looking at verse 2 in verse in psalm 73 verse 2 it says but as for me always think about yourself see there is a problem there's a problem with those who are always growing with the crowd they don't have a mind of their own a decision of their own they cannot take an independent decision and say i'm responsible for the decisions in my life and i'm going to bear the consequence of the decisions in my life they are following the crowd any step they are taking they cannot walk by faith and they cannot walk by a focus on this is where i'm going they are asking brother i'm thinking of going this direction i think the lord is leading me i think the lord is guiding me but what do you think ah what do you think the lord is guiding you is such a thing if i were you well you are not me and then you turn to another person and you say, my sister, uh, well, I, I just want to get all the opinions I can have, all the ideas I can have before I take this step. Your faith is sleeping away. If you are like that, you're not talking to people of faith. You're not talking to people of vision. You're not talking to people who know your destiny. They don't know what God has created you for it's like if i ask somebody in my old church and i said i'm thinking of starting a bible study in flat two 1973 they'll say bible study have you ever seen another person in our church here do that then i say i'm sorry you're sorry you drop your destiny you will not drop your destiny as if if i ask somebody i went to colleges and various places those times that's what her brother was talking about when he was answering question that i came to you know victory college at Ikeja there i was you know i was doing other things and i went here i went there. It's, if i asked somebody in my church at that time should i go how will you go a church we don't do things like that how would he have been converted at that time and all the people that were converted how would they be converted at that time it's as if i ask somebody I, i'm thinking the lord is leading me to start to have deeper life bible church and go beyond just having ministry have deeper life bible church what do you think they're not going to think i should you have to be a man and be responsible for whatever decision the lord is leading and says this is the way go ye therein and the lord will bless your life in jesus name <laughs> observing the steps of a growing man to glory as for me my feet were almost gone my steps had well nigh slipped your your leg your feet will not sleep in jesus name you'll be a man of decision you'll be a woman of decision and a man of decision is a man of destiny a woman of decision is a woman of destiny you will not miss your destiny in jesus name look at verse look at verse 23 there in verse 23 nevertheless i am continually with thee i'm continually listening to you i'm continually hearing the word of god and wanting to do what the lord has ordained nevertheless i'm continually with thee thou as holding me by thy right hand he will hold you by his right hand in verse 24 it says thou shalt guide me with thy counsel when does the lord do that after you have had the word of god and then you are not in a hurry to rush out you either kneel down or you bend your head bow your head 
you think of what you have heard you take those words you internalize them and you send them back to God and God begins to communicate with you and then he guides you and before you leave the service you know that you know for without any shadow of doubt he has guided me with his counsel and afterward received me to glory look at verse 25 in verse 25 whom have I in heaven but thee and there is none upon earth that I desire beside thee verse 26 it says my flesh and my heart feel it but God is the strength of my heart I thought you say amen, amen. and my portion forever my portion forever my portion forever it will be your portion in Jesus name three things here quickly before we pray the graceful steps of obedience towards glory graceful steps graceful steps you are taking a step at a time a day at a time a week at a time you hear from the Lord and then you step out immediately you hear from the Word of God and you step out immediately graciously without disturbing any other person without disorganizing the life of any other person graciously you are moving on step after step in obedience to the Word of God it tells us in Psalm 119 verse 133 Psalm 119 verse 133 order my steps order my steps order my steps in thy word and let not any iniquity have dominion over me and the man who prayed like that and he said order my steps I'm waiting for you Lord I'm going to obey you Lord I'm going to listen to your word, Lord. I'm going to act according to your word. Order my steps in thy word. Let not iniquity have dominion over me. Look at verse 60 there. Verse 60 says, I have I made haste, I delayed not to keep to obey thy commandments. I do not say, yes, I've heard, I've heard. But I need to hear that another time, another time until time is gone, until the conviction has gone away from you. I've heard it now. You are ordering my steps, and I made haste, I delayed not to keep thy commandments. Look at verse 63. In verse 63, I am a companion of all them that fear thee all them that fear thee you look at people around you and there are people that will pull you off from the step the lord wants you to take they do not fear the lord even when you tell them the lord is telling me this is what to do they say which lord they're the relatives of pharaoh who say i do not know that god you will not be a companion of the people that will bury your vision and bury your revelation and bury your conviction you are not associated with people that are always tearing your convictions apart that are always you know pushing you back from that conviction the lord is giving you i am a companion of all them that fear thee and of them that that keep thy precepts of them that keep thy precepts I pray that will be your testimony in Jesus name number two number two the God the guarded steps through opposition to glory the guarded steps through opposition to glory every good thing the Lord reveals to you every good thing he directs and he says this is the way you have to guard you have to protect that way at the church i was going before i heard about salvation 
I think I've told you before, but maybe you were not here at that time, were there, but there was no watch of salvation. And eventually somebody invited me to a place where they preach salvation by grace, by, by faith through grace of the grace of God. And I had that, and I needed to take a step and give my life to the Lord Jesus Christ. All the people around me at that time, they frowned at that. How can you leave our church, a spiritual church, a white garment church and then where you are useful you help us in beating drum if you leave who is going to continue to beat drums for us i said i don't know about that and then i gave my life to i became born again as a result of taking that decision and not caring what people think and what people feel here we are today i said here we are today and there you are today God is going to deal with you like he dealt with me. God is going to promote you like he promoted me. But you will have to take a step and say, here is where I stand. This is what I'm going to do. And nobody will bury that vision in your heart in Jesus' name. And look at this, the guarded step, you have to protect that opposition will come, difficulties will come, challenges will come, you'll protect all that and nobody will bury that dream in Jesus' name. Look at Psalm 18, Psalm 18 verse 36, Thou hast enlarged my steps under me, thou hast enlarged my steps under me. Is the Lord talking to somebody there today? God has enlarged your steps under you that your feet did not sleep. Your feet will not sleep. Look at verse 39. In verse 39, for thou hast girded me with strength unto battle. Every battle in your life, you will win the victory in Jesus' name. Thou hast subdued under me those that rose up against me. You look right, look left, and look back and look forward. All the people that rose up against you, you'll not find them again in Jesus' name. And then we come to the third one. And number three is the guileless steps, no hypocrisy, guileless steps, and there's no deception. The guileless steps of overcomers until glory. Overcomers until glory. Overcomers until glory. Any overcomer there today? Praise the Lord, you are with me and with you. We'll all be overcomers in Jesus' name. Look at Psalm 57, and we're reading from verse 6. Psalm 57, verse 6, it says in verse 6, They have prepared a net for my steps. My soul is bowed down. They have digged a pitch before me, into the midst whereof they are falling themselves. Every pitch that is dug for you, to fall into the diggers of the pitch will make use of their own pitch. Yeah. You will cross over. Yeah. I said you will cross over. Yeah. You will not fall into their pitch in Jesus' name. Yeah. Destiny, your destiny will be fulfilled. Yeah. Your destination where you are going to, that destination you will get there. Everything the Lord has earmarked, ordained from the beginning of your life, before the foundation of your life, everything the Lord will fulfill in your life in Jesus' name. I see a man of destiny there. I see a woman of destiny there. I see a child of destiny there. It will be done. I said it will be done. But look at the secret in verse, in verse 7. The secret in verse 7. My heart is fixed, O oh God. My heart is fixed. My heart is fixed, O oh God. My heart is fixed. Tempters can come. My heart is fixed. Temptresses can come. My heart is fixed. 
Opposers can come, my heart is fixed. Those who derail others can come, my heart is fixed. Those who are going to give contrary advice, my heart is fixed. Those who are going to say, no, you cannot pass here. You cannot come here. You cannot cross over. My heart is fixed. There may be a lion in the way, a bear in the way. There may be enemies in the way. There may be people in the way that say that they are stronger than God and what God has ordained will not be fulfilled that their will will be fulfilled God will prove all your enemies all your opposers all your adversaries he'll pro prove them a liar in Jesus name my heart is fixed oh God my heart is fixed I will sing and give praise the Lord will give will put a new song in your mouth I said the Lord will put a new song in your mouth All the old songs I never make it I never succeed I never get there I never make it I want to get to the mountain But something always comes And double crosses my way The good thing I wanted to do I never do All that old song The Lord will brush them out of your mouth A new song I said a new song a new song of victory a new song of courage a new song of happiness a new song of determination a new song of diligence a new song of achievement in jesus name my heart is fixed oh god my heart is fixed i will sing and give praise your life will sing and give praise unto the lord in jesus name why don't you rise up and tell the Lord and present yourself before the Lord the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord the Lord will order your steps hand over your life into the hands of God and say Lord I surrender any evil sin any iniquity any transgression any kind of evil all that I abandon all that I repent of and I take the Lord as my Savior I take the Lord as my as my redeemer and i give my life the totality of my life my soul my spirit my body my present my future my past everything i hand over into the hands of the lord guide me lead me direct me control me i'm totally in your hand and my heart is fixed oh god my heart is fixed i will sing a new song and i will praise your name talk to the lord speak to the lord and let him take charge of your life take total control of your life he's waiting for you to hand over yourself unto the lord and to say lord here am i i belong to you entirely without any reservation and without holding back anything and the lord will guide you and lead you to his goodness and to godliness and to greatness and will lead you unto glory